right. Hello and welcome to Fiddle Word Gaming. I'm Justin and we are back painting the Reformato Commander here. Um, a few days ago we uh, did the base coat and uh, basic wash. Today we're just going to finish up with the highlights and some of the fine details and then we'll be good to go. All right, I tried this a little earlier, but we had a bit of a YouTube hiccup today. The servers were down, so hopefully we should be good um, from now on. But we will see. Um, okay, so I'm just going to work on his coat. Um, I've already dry brushed his uh, base a little bit, the wood part with some uh, with a lighter kind of bone color over the top. And now I'm just going to start working on the highlights on his coat. And we're just going to use the same red, but then we'll just mix a little bit of white into it. So, got this same pure red here. I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to mix a wee bit of white into it. And for this highlight, it's going to be about, oh, I don't know, about two-thirds red to probably one-third white. Somewhere about that. And we'll just mix it in. And there we go. All right. Take my glasses off again because I can't see. Um, and I'm probably going to use a bit of a smaller brush this time. Just because I want to be careful with those highlights. And I'm just applying it to the raised areas um, of the coat. So just like all the little folds and flaps, just the, just the edges of that. And then just around like that for the elbow. No, I'm not I'm not being too detailed with this one. It's just it's not one I'm taking a super long amount of time on. I'm just trying to make it look well, I'm trying to make it pop, I guess. And then we'll just do the bottom of his coat. I'm making sure to avoid all of the nice um, shaded in black areas that the wash filled in. making it pop a little bit might not be the best because I'm not used to painting in this position but uh, we'll, we'll just do our best and see how it goes all right there we go so got a few more folds on the other arm I'm just gonna paint it in on all the little raised areas. Just like that. And you don't have to be too, um, too perfect. You can just, just applying a touch on the raised areas is good. And the model is well sculpted like this one is. It'll just pick up, pick it up where the highlights are, where the raised areas are almost like the the models the sculpt is doing the work for you there we go great okay now almost done the coat now if you want to be a little bit more uh, picky with this you can of course can be but i want to kind of move along Paint the other areas, so I think I'm just doing a boat. Oh, I missed a pocket. So I'll do that. Right there, bottom of the coat there. And under the armpit. And that looks 
pretty good like that. All right, we're going to move on to, let's do the big areas first. Let's do his pants. So this time I'm not going to, I'm not going to mix this one with white because I have actually a lighter brown color than the base coat. So I'm just going to use that lighter brown and it's a, it's called monster brown. And we're just going to apply this to the pants. And often I, when I'm doing like pants or muted brown colors, I don't really hi highlight them too much because sometimes it's nice to have areas of the model that aren't too contrasty and then areas that are just to mix it up a bit. So I'm just going to put these on the folds of the pants. Just doing the same technique. Oh, hello, Thomas. Well, if you want to fall asleep, that's okay with me. Just as long as you keep the uh, video running so I can rack up my views. <laughs> but no, yeah, I thought the music, uh, let me know what you guys think of the music. If you like it, if you don't like it. I thought it might be even more chill this time. Yeah, it did. Um, when you do the wash, it kind of brings everything together. <laughs> exactly. So I want to make it even more relaxing this time. Thank you. Yeah, I just pulled this. This is just a free one. Um, off the YouTube audio library, so I'll do a deep dive later and check out some royalty-free options um, from other sources, but for now I just picked a quick one off the YouTube library. And I'm just about done these pants here. The front of them, anyway. Yeah, well, uh, if Mia Mercury picks some music, that might be a whole different, uh, a whole different theme. Maybe, maybe one that's not going to put you to sleep so much. Might be good for a battle report, though. All right. And just picking out the highlights in the pants. Just got a bit of folds here that I'm doing, and it's just about done. That's pretty good. So I'll show you guys a little progress zoom. You can see here. Maybe the coat's just a bit more punchy. And the pants have come out a little bit, but we still have a little ways to go. There we go. All right, what should we do next? Let's do the, let's do the white parts. Let's do the collar and everything else. All right, now I'm just gonna do uh, pure white, just pure old matte white. And I'm gonna put this on the collar, not the collar, the, uh, the cuffs. All right, so I'm just gonna go like this. And the same technique, just applying it on the raised areas. And just on the 
very edges, and that should look pretty good. There we go. And you can spend as much time as you want doing this. If you want to be really detailed, you can really take your time, but I'm just kind of going with the flow. Oops, got some paint on me. There we go. Yes, of course. So this is a this is a commander. Maybe he's a maybe he's a really melee commander. He likes to get up there in the brawl and fight. So he needs a red coat. I actually have a a cool paint. It's called um I forget what it's called, but it's like a blood splatter effect and it dries kind of shiny. So I, I apply it to like um like dinosaur teeth and that kind of stuff, or like werewolf claws. It looks really cool when it's um, when it's dried because it's like the rest of the model is kind of normal, and then the the fresh blood effect is all shiny and glistening. If you like, I can apply some to this guy's sword. If you guys want to look at that later on. this cup here again just going over the raised areas carefully there <laughs> maybe if it wasn't so expensive I might use the paint to uh, prank someone but I feel like I get better value going to the dollar store and buying some fake blood there. All right. And he has a little bit of a white, he has this little white scarf or whatever it's called. Just in the center of his coat. So we're just going to color that in as well. Hmm. That looks pretty good. Sure. Now, moving on. Um, let's do his boots. Now, again, I don't have to mix a color for his boots because I did it in a, quite a dark color, so I'm just going to use a, a kind of a lighter gray that I have. And for, for blacks especially, I don't really p apply a lot of highlights, just apply like one or two kind of highlights on the very, very raised areas, and that should be good. All right, I'll get right in here, just on the raised areas. Just like that. And on the other boot, I'm going to do the same thing. Just delicately touch up the raised areas, maybe on the tip of the boot. Just so it, it like has a little shine effect, like the sun's hitting it or something. And we'll do the back as well. Right like that. There we go. Yeah, I don't have to be too picky. Just a few dots of highlight here and there. Round it out a bit. And yeah, that looks pretty good, not too bad. Oh, hello, Demon Lord. Welcome. Thanks for joining for the second time. Um, sorry the first time the YouTube crashed like crazy, so we, uh, we seem to be doing okay now. 
And uh, we were just doing his coat, his pants, his boots, and his cuffs. So now we're going to move on to, I think we'll do the yellow part, the lining, or where his buttons are. And his collar. We'll just do that in yellow again. And this one, I don't think I'm going to, um, should I brighten it? Yeah, I'll brighten it a, li a little bit more. And I'll just mix in a bit of white. Just a touch of white. There we go. And I'll mix this, mix this together. Just like so. Perfect. Now, we're just going to apply this very slightly, just on the tips of the collar. If you just apply uh, your highlights, just like with a dab here and there, um, sometimes the more delicately you apply it, the more contrast it makes, because it's just, it's like picking out certain areas and leaving the rest kind of dark. So you get that nice contrast and everything just pops. If you do too much, um, sometimes you just ruin the, ruin the wash that you were so hard, that you work so hard to do. Um, so you just want to be delicate and just apply a little bit, even if it looks really subtle, in the end, it'll probably turn out okay. That looks pretty good. Um, yeah, we're getting there. Oh yeah, I've got music this time, so. It's just one track that's looping, but uh, thought I'd give it a little bit of ambiance this time. And hopefully Thomas isn't asleep. <laughs> All right. I'll give you another preview, uh, another update. Uh, let's go here. Here we go. So you can kind of see where we're where we're headed now. It's getting there. We got a our highlights are coming along nicely. But we're not quite there yet. Yeah, it's uh, with the wash and the highlights, it makes a big difference. Um, you can see I painted some of these uh, these these guys today as well. Um, these guys are super flat, but this is kind of what we had yesterday with this guy, and you can just see the difference between how flat something like this is, but when you put a wash over it, it just and then the highlights especially, it just comes to life. All right. Um, let's do, what should we do? Maybe, yeah, we're, we're kind of coming into the end here. Let's do the uh, flesh. Let's just do the face. Before I get way too shaky, I'll try to attempt the face. Now the face, sometimes I do an extra highlight just to pick out the cheekbones. So I've done the first wash, um, was a with a lighter wash than the rest of the model and then I'll just go back to the base color which is uh, elven flesh I think and then I'll just pick out most of the face most of the raised areas anyway we'll do the cheeks we'll do the chin the eyes brows the ridges I should say 
cheeks on the other side. And that should be good. Not too bad. And then once that dries, we'll apply a final highlight on the face of just a really, really light, uh, the flesh, um, elven flesh mixed with a uh, white. And we'll just apply that on the nose bridge and the cheekbones. And it's probably dry by now. It dries really fast when you're using that little amount of paint. But uh, yeah. A little bit of white. There we go. Mix that together. How's the uh, how's the quality today, guys? Are you doing any? Are you getting any lagging or any issues on your end? All right, so we're just going to go over the, the final highlights in the face, tip of the nose, cheekbones, maybe the chin, the other cheekbone, and maybe we'll just try the eyebrows. Hmm, that's pretty good. Great, I'm glad. So yesterday I was getting a bit of uh, issues with the resolution. I'll try to up it next time, see if I can. Um, just to give you a bit of a clearer view, but uh, since it's going smoothly, we'll just leave it for now. Now I'm gonna do the eyeballs and get these out of the way. Eyeballs, I paint um, black first. And this is, this is the part that really I don't do this on all my models, just like the important characters. If I'm doing hordes or just troops, I will just leave the eyeballs out and basically they'll be squinting. Um, but this guy's a commander, so we'll just go ahead and draw the eyeballs in. Now I'm gonna have to get really close here and just apply the black. Right under the socket, right in the socket, I should say. Okay. Got one side done. And the tricky part is getting the sides even, because usually I get one side good and the other side just doesn't look the same, but we'll try. Right, that's not too bad. It's not perfect, but that's okay. It's not bad. All right, now that we did the black for the eyeball, we're going to go with white. And then we're going to paint the pupil in later. And the pupil is quite difficult as well, because it's just a tiny little dot. Actually, I've got some white on my palette already, but we'll just use that. Should be still wet enough. Live action cats miniatures. <laughs> well, at least with the I find fur easier to deal with than skin, so that's a that's one benefit of having a cat miniature. Okay, now this one I've got to be really careful with, really careful. It's okay. 
and sometimes with the eyeballs or the eyes in general if you screw up you kind of have to touch up later on peak concentration right now. Oops. And there I did it. I screwed up. So we're just going to have to fix that. That's okay. That's okay. So how do we fix that up? Um, so I just, I just painted a bit too much white, so it went onto his cheek. Um... So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna redo the whole step. I'm just gonna paint over with some flesh. Now I'm not repainting the whole face. I'm just doing that little, that little part, um, that little part where I kind of screwed up. So I'm just gonna paint that over. It should be fairly easy to do. Just like that. And then we'll let that dry for now, um, and then we'll come back to the eyeballs, because once I screwed up, I kind of have to wait and, and do it all over again. Um, but we'll go. We'll move on to the hat for now. Let's do the hat. So we've got the deep blue that you guys chose, and we're just going to paint a highlight, kind of similar to what I did in the boots. I'm not going to go overkill with the highlight. Just going to add some... Uh, Add some white to that deep blue. And that's probably good. Like, maybe a bit whiter than that. Something like that. That's probably good. And we're just going to paint this basically on the tips. Tip of the hat. Kind of like that, and then maybe a swoop. There looks pretty good. And then we'll do another mark on the rim or the brim and over there, and then on the top of the hat, just kind of like a circle swish. Just kind of like that. That looks pretty good for the hat. Of course, I need to do the feather, but I'll do that later. Um, let's see if we can go back to the face now. Does it look dry? Yeah, it looks pretty dry. So we're going to go ahead and try the eyeball, or the pupil. Pupil, pupil, pupil. In this part, I just need to get a little bit of black on my brush and just dab the pupil. Just the tiniest dab. Pretty good, there we go. And how does that look? That looks okay considering we haven't done the, uh, we haven't done the wash where I screwed up under the eye yet. So we're gonna just add that. Pupils are hard, yeah. That's why I don't do them. They're time consuming too. Um, and this guy's, his, his left eye is good. His right eye is a bit, it's a bit wonky, but we'll see if it looks better after I apply some wash again. You can see, um, hmm, this guy's, it's even hard to see on camera, the pupils. The, the thing about the pupils and the eyes, the smaller you make it, the, better it looks but it's really hard to make it small if you do it too big they just kind of look bug-eyed and and out of proportion so 
we're just again we're just applying some wash where uh, I screwed up and hopefully that should fix itself just right there add a little bit more yeah we might have to go ahead and do that uh, the right eye over again but that's okay Yeah, the, the eyes are hard. And usually they look derpy. They do. <laughs> yeah, some people use a pin rather than a brush. Um, I've got this brush here, but I basically just apply paint on the very, very tip. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of frayed off. So it's just like a little, it's actually kind of smaller than a pin. It's just like the very, very tip of the brush. Okay, um, let's do, let's do the feather. And you can apply some, a little bit of white here. We can apply some thin strokes of white along the feather. Maybe like, maybe like that, something like that. I'll wet this down a bit. I'm gonna pour some, the you know, white's kind of uh, dried out a bit. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Come on. Hmm? What's going on with my paint? There we go. Oops, it all came out there. And we're just going to paint some fine lines for the feather. Let's see if that looks okay. And then around the edge, we'll probably make those a little bit more pronounced. And yeah, that kind of looks good. There we go. Okay, let's do some. Do I want to go back to the eye? No, it still looks a little wet in there. So I'm going to go and do some, I'm going to go over the brass parts again. Got it here somewhere. Here we go. Because the wash kind of muted all the brass parts down, I'm just gonna re go over them again. Looks like it clogged up here. Hang on. So yeah, I'm just going to go over the brass parts again, just to pop them out a little bit. He's got the brass on these pistols on his waist, tucked into his waist, I should say. He's got the buttons going down, boop, boop. clasps on the other side and we're just touching those up just delicately we've got the sword handle just gonna put some brass on there got the uh, scabbard just gonna put some brass highlights on the back of the handle and that should be it. It's looking good. 
Okay, we'll do the same thing with the uh, with the silver parts. So we'll do some. Uh, now I use the same brass color. Uh, I should say weapon bronze. For the metal portions, I'm going to go a little bit lighter. Do one shade lighter metallic than I used last time. I'll just apply this to the edge of the sword. That looks good. There we go. The other edge of the sword. There we go. And then he's got some... Uh, belt buckles and whatnot that will do as well. Just touch those up. You don't have to do too much. You don't want to flood the whole area. But it looks pretty good. Alright, so the metals parts, that's all done. Um... Do have a little bit of brown left that I forgot. The the uh, kind of uh, buckle that loops around that holds the sword up. So I'm just going to paint a strip of that same lighter brown, and that's going to go on the uh, strap here. That's just going to make some highlights. I'll do the hair, that same color, because, uh, why not? Just touch up the hair. And then we'll do the front side of it the same way. Alright. Almost got that out of the way. And then a little bit of the hair too here. And his mustache will also do as well. Come on. That looks pretty good. And we also have that band around his hat that will touch up as well. That's good enough. Okay, perfect. That's pretty good. We got that, that, that. I'm just looking to make sure I didn't miss anything. Got a scabbard. So I think we're just going to go back to his eye. Yes, his mighty mustache. Just going to go back to his eye. I'm just going to check it out. Yeah, his one eye looks really good. His other eye, not so much. So it's gonna do another peak concentration mode and try to touch up the white and hopefully not screw it up this time. All right, I think that's good. I didn't screw that part up. But we're going to try the black part now. The pupil. And again, I'm just going to try the very tip. The very, very tip of the brush. And then just... A very thin stroke. Not even a stroke so much as a dab. And that looks pretty good. We're going to leave it at that because I don't want to... I don't want to screw it up anymore. Sometimes I think, oh, it's not quite perfect enough. But we're going... But I, but I, you know, I get too greedy and I, uh, I try to go over it. 
and then I just end up screwing it up. <laughs> so I don't know if you can even see the eyeballs, but, but there you go. Maybe it's even too, like maybe you have to zoom in even more. Um, but you can kind of see they're done there. And they're very small, they're very subtle. Like I can barely see them with my glasses on. I have to take them off so I can have my uh, close-up vision to see them. My bifocal vision as uh, low life would say. Um, but I think we're pretty much done guys. I mean, I have to do the base, which I'll do, but that's kind of boring. So maybe I'll do that. I mean, I can do that real quick. I'll just do that real quick. Um, now for my base, I kind of like to use this curved brush. It, it curves out a bit uh, just because I've used it so much. And I left it in a bad position for a while, but it's nice to do the base because I just curve it away. Um, I just put the curve away from the base. Um, and then I don't have to worry about messing anything up that I've already painted. So just add some more black. And it's quite easy. Just go around. Just like so. And I usually do two coats of this because the bases um, tend to chip. They bump into things and whatnot. <laughs> like how you wake up every day. Well, I'm hoping your uh, eyes are a little more even than this guy's. I would be worried if you woke up every day looking like this guy. And it's got a, there's a little tiny rim to the base, just above the the planks. Oh, speaking of planks, I gotta add. There's little metal like nails in the floor, so I'll add those. With, I'll just touch those up with some silver um, paint. Or metallic paint and then they'll be done. Just do that. And we'll just go around one more coat maybe. Just like that. Almost there. Then we'll, oh yeah, apply some silver to those little, to those little metal things, or those little metal nails on the floor. bits and there we go so that's it guys now I'll give you another close-up just to see the finished product See how it turned out. I don't know how close I can get without it going out of focus, but probably about right there. And you can kind of see what we did. We got the feather on the back. Just like so. And there we go. Um, I'll show you this guy's again. So this guy, I think this guy's painted a bit better. He might be a bit shiny because the, I got the shiny varnish on him right now. I haven't matted him down yet. But this guy was uh, it's probably a little bit better painted. 
because I could concentrate a little bit more being off camera um, and not having to worry about it in the frame, but we'll get there. And then uh, do a bit of show and tell. I got my other ship here. I showed you guys the other ship yesterday, but that was a brigantine. This one's a, um, a light frigate that I painted up not too long ago. And I got a few models there that are painted and unpainted. Just make sure to wash my brushes before you do that because you always want to wash your brushes so they don't so you don't spend too much on brushes and yes yeah, so, so I painted this in a kind of a more French theme um, I guess. Let's stick this guy out of the thing so he can dry. But yeah, this is the light frigate. This is a bit of a bigger ship than the one I showed you yesterday. And I got some more um, miniatures that I painted up. Yeah, the highlights make a big difference. They, uh, especially if you don't go overboard, if you just touch up the, really just touch up the lightest areas or the highest areas and pick them out, um, it stands out so much more. And I've done it the same technique like on all these models. Sometimes if I'm, I'm, I'm a bit more, uh, I spend a bit more time on my Blood and Plunder models, but on some of my Lord of the Rings models, or if I'm painting a lot and a lot of miniatures, I'll tend to use more dry brush techniques instead of the highlight techniques because it's faster. Um, but I like that these all have a consistent uh, kind of paint job and theme. I have a few more models like these silver. This is what the models look like unpainted, completely unprimed, unpainted. Um, so you can see there. So I have a bunch of these to paint up. They're quite heavy. Um, but yeah, and it was fun. And this ship is not metal. <laughs> Obviously, it's made of uh, robots. <laughs> oh, hey, Mia, I just finished. I'll show you um, the finished product because I know you're out probably walking the dog um but yeah there we go that's the whoop, whoop, finished product right there and i was just showing everybody else um the ship i recently painted up it comes with cannon so it's pretty cool comes with these little uh little light cannons that i painted up these ones are metal also comes with these uh, little swivel guns that actually swivel in place. Pew 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 pew. Um, we got a few at the back. Um, and then I I will do sails for this as well at some point. I've just rigged it up, um, and it just has like elastic um, rigging, elastic cord rigging, um, just to hold it in place. But I will do sails at some point. Probably not all the way down. I'll probably do sails on the upper um the upper part of the mast um i might do that in a video i'll also show you the back of this uh-oh we got a bit of a we ran afoul uh-oh hang on here we go you know what this isn't working out i'm just gonna this guy's gonna sail away he's just gonna sail all the way over here Okay, so for my uh, for my next stream, um, <laughs> yeah, you like the pew pew. Um, I think I'm gonna try to do a battle report to show uh, the commander that we just painted, and some of my other miniatures. We'll do a blood and plunder live battle report, not a battle report, I guess, a live battle. Um, I might try to do that on Monday. Um, I think the idea for that, I might get you guys, if, if there's people watching, um, you guys can actually run or help run the AI, um, force. So it'll be me playing me, but, um, that's not always super fun. So maybe you guys can just call out actions for, um, yeah, the enemy force or the, the force defending whatever, whatever you guys choose. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll uh, I'll post something on my YouTube in, in advance of that battle, 
to let you know what's going on. But I think, yeah, probably Monday night I'll, I'll set that up. And maybe we can have some fun. That should probably be around a, an hour or two. Is this how I bait us into the game? If, of course. Yes. I should be getting paid sponsorship, but... <laughs> um, no, but yeah, it's fun. I mean, I do it by myself. I, I play I play Solitaire, Blood and Plunder by myself, so... I might as well do it live stream and then have a bit of interaction. It should be fun. Um, yeah, and... Yeah, do you guys have any other... Uh, questions before I before I sign off today was a bit quicker of a I mean it didn't take that long to put the highlights on so that's pretty good um, the first the first time was a the first day was a lot more time consuming but yeah I also got to paint these up I'll paint one of these up for the battle report as well one of these heavy cannons And then uh, I'll set up this board. So I'll probably try to set it up so it has one view of the whole board. Hopefully I can get it all in. Um, and it'll be an amphibious battle. So we can use one ship and one, one land force. On Twitch? Hmm. Yeah, but Amazon's evil, so <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I haven't explored Twitch yet. Um, YouTube seems pretty easy to set up. Oh, there's live Warhammer streams. Yeah, I, I watch um, live Lord of the Rings streams that are pretty fun. Um, but anyways, we can we can try a live Blood and Plunder one and see how things go. But yeah, anyways, my voice is kind of um, cracking, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off soon. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, going through this paint scheme with me with this guy. Um, I'm pretty happy with him. He's looking pretty good. This is probably my standard, uh, kind of my standard quality for for Blood and Plunder so far. Um, yes, Mia does stream on Twitch, so you can check her out at. I think all of you guys probably know her stream, but Mia, maybe you want to <clears throat> put your account, your Twitch account. I forget the, it's Mia Mercury something, but I forget, I forget the exact uh, handle. But yeah, Mia does great um, drawing streams and also she incorporates snacks and food in there too, so. They're pretty fun to watch. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, I have, uh, I have quite a bit to paint as far as mini goes. Um, so maybe we'll do some more of these. I'll do some battle reports, maybe some D&D stuff. It's always fun. Uh, I have a lot of Dwarven Forge, so I can show you that as well. Oh, Mia Mercury Art, I think. Is that it? Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Mia Mercury Art. I'm so bad, I should know. <laughs> Alright, um, yeah, anyways, I thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in. I think I'm going to sign off now. Um, and we'll try another one on Monday, so stay tuned. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.